Hi, and thank you everyone for joining us today for our web chat with uh, Grameen Foundation CEO, Steve Hollingworth. My name is Kate Bartholomew. I'm Director of Major Gifts at Grameen Foundation. Um, and let me uh, stop sharing. And there we go. Steve, uh, you're on and take it away. Great, Kate, thanks so much. Uh, I'm thrilled to welcome everybody to our first webinar for 2020. And I'm also very excited to share with you just an update on some of the things happening here at Grameen Foundation and some of the momentum that we continue to build with our program. So I wanna thank Kate for inviting everybody and, ho and hosting all this. And I'm here with Quincy and my colleague here in DC who's helping to drive the presentation. We'd, we'd, I, I wanna do a brief uh, just chat and then we'd go to some Q and A afterwards. Uh, I hope folks are, are interested in having a longer conversation. You know, in 2016, we set the goal at Grameen Foundation of reaching out to 25 million new clients by 2025. And uh, we're almost, we're halfway through that goal period and we've reached a total of 13 million clients. When you actually multiply that by family sizes and you'll see from one of my examples, you know, the impacts uh, transfer through to families. You know, we're very, very proud of the scope and scale uh, of our impact at Grameen Foundation and, and the work that we're doing. You know, success that like, uh, like we've had uh, throughout our time doesn't come easy. You know, it comes from really dedicated folks, uh, you know, people who really day to day uh, are, are doing the work in the field, are supporting the work in so many ways. It comes, you know, as a result of all of your direct support to our mission, which we're, in, we're so, so grateful for. It comes also from testing different approaches and models it comes from gathering, you know, information about how well that experience has gone and the pilot uh, efforts that we have and how, how they can be scaled. So it really is a testament to the way I think Grameen Foundation is both extremely efficient and very smart in the way that it works. And, uh, you know, a big part of being smart these days is actually understanding some significant global trends and how they are opportunities for including the poor. And, you know, there are new tools that are opening up uh, and that we're very, very active in using that help to include the poor and help to give, give tremendous opportunities for lifting the poor out of, uh, out of poverty. And we're doubling down, you know, on this work. We're continuing really to focus on how these new tools uh, are becoming so valuable and important to the poorest among us. And really, it all comes down for us to a concept that we've been working on for some time, we call it the Grameen Community Agent. And in our history now, over the last 10 years or so, we've actually technology enabled over 300,000 Grameen uh, Community Agents, providing access to uh, mobile technology to themselves and to their neighbors, providing access to the right kinds of information and services that helps them lift their productivity in agriculture, it helps them improve their small business management. It helps them get the right kinds of information and training and support uh, on, for financial products, things like loans and savings. And it's all done through mobile, mobile technology, mobile phones. It's, it, it's a new day and these new tools really are critical to the work that we're, we're able to do with the Grameen Community Agents. You know, th this is becoming really our, our hallmark in the the, you know, the, the, the work that we are really now planning to aggressively expand and, uh, and, and include so many more of the world's poor in. You know, it, it may sound like a very techy thing to do. It may sound like something, you know, that is just, you know, uh, unreal in a new world. But actually, it, it's all about what Grameen has always been about. It's about people. It's about empowering people and using these new tools to empower people. Because, you know, the essential truth to addressing poverty is that these things can enable access to information, access to services, but it really is the support that comes from neighbor to neighbor that addresses poverty. If your neighbor is equipped to support you with the right kinds of information and the right kinds of advice and, and, and links to the outside world through mobile phones, that, that neighbor is very important. So our best hope for eradicating poverty is technology in the hands of people and with neighbors helping neighbors. And that's what a Grameen community agent does. And so we're, we're, we're working you know, to expand this work. Uh, we we want to highlight in particular 
you know, the fact that, that one Grameen community agent in the, on average in, in many parts of the world can reach out to about 150 of their own neighbors to have an impact. In different countries, particularly in South Asia, the number is much higher, as many as 500 neighbors that they can, they can impact. So this is scalable, it's self-sustaining, and we've proven over many, many years now that this approach uh, has a profound impact in communities, and it does bring neighbors together with, with one another. So, you know, we want to call your attention, if we can, you know, to the work that's happening uh, on our website to highlight the stories, the examples, you know, the amazing work that's happening with the Grameen Community Agents. And you know, one of the one of the age, one of the stories that I wanted to concentrate on is about a woman uh, whose name is Comfort Apia. And she is, uh, she's in Ghana. She lives in a village called Jerusalem Village in Ghana. And uh, this is highlighted on our website. And I hope all of you will take the chance to have a, have a look at our website. But, you know, Com Comfort's had, had challenges. She's had, she had a tough life, frankly. You know, she was orphaned at a young age. She, she, uh, she had a, the father of her children abandoned both her uh, and her children. And she was essentially left on her own to manage at a very young age, a cocoa farm that her parents had, uh, had had. And she struggled, frankly, with that. She didn't have a lot of access to information. She didn't have a lot of access to support, uh, you know, her to, to manage that farm and to get the most out of it. But we're, we're very proud of the fact that we've been able to develop in Ghana, a program called Farm Development Plan, which essentially equips field agents and the field agent that supports Comfort, his name is Bismarck. He's a neighbor of hers. And Bismarck has access on his mobile device to how to help a farmer like Comfort uh, improve uh, the, the, the husbandry of her crop, the weeding, the fertilization, you know, the right kinds of intercropping to make sure that she has enough uh, food for her family as well as has a, has, a, has a good cocoa production coming out of her farm. And, and she, you know, uh, Bismarck is able to sit down with Comfort and make a plan with her about what steps she needs to take to improve the overall productivity of her farm. And, and she's been working on that now for a number of years and has seen really very positive increases in the overall yield from her cocoa crop and from the other crops that she grows, uh, as well as a boost in her income. So uh, but with, with, the, with the resources that she's been able to gain from cocoa farming, she's done other things. She's improved her, her ability to store her crop in her, in her house to make sure she has less damage to the crop uh, while it's being stored and getting ready for market. She, she also has a small stall in her village that sells rice and banku, which is a, a Ghanaian uh, stew that the town folks in her village like to come and buy from her. And she's also, frankly, been able to improve her own self-esteem and confidence. Look at, look at her now, you know, in this picture with her daughters. And, you know, look, look at the satisfaction she has that now she's able, you know, to support her children's education. And she's viewed in her community as a successful entrepreneur uh, and, a, and a leader uh, in her own right. So she's, she's just one story amongst the seven million that so far through Grameen Community Agents, we've been able to impact. I mentioned, you know, we've, we've trained and facilitated over 300,000 agents, and we just wanna do more. We wanna expand this significantly over the next three years because of the impact that it has on, on improving the access to information that a, a woman like Comfort has, the support and training that she enjoys, and, you know, the, the access to, to things like savings accounts, and small loans that help her to invest in her, her, uh, her agricultural work and have it grow. So, you know, th this really has become, you know, I believe uh, because of the focus, you know, on, on being smart, being efficient, be, and using, you know, these new tools that are, that are uh, available all to, uh, to us now, you know, the, the Grameen Community Agent has really become our hallmark and it's really the, you know, the, 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 the calling card now that we want to continue to, you know, to, to, uh, to advance in, in all of our work in so many ways. So, uh, you know, please do have a look on our website, GrameenFoundation.org. You know, the, this video is there uh, that tells Comfort's story. Uh, there's also a lot of other information about what we do 
and how we blend people and technology to really accomplish uh, things at amazing scale. Um, so, you know, with that, I'm very, very happy to take any questions if there may be. Uh, you know, very, very grateful for all of you joining. And I think Princey is going to help me with the with the questions. As they come well, there is for all of you commenting. There is a Q and A function on the bottom of the web chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in there, and we'll get to them as they come in. Uh, while we're waiting, Steve, do you want to talk maybe about one of the other examples of community agents that we're that we're working with globally? Sure. No, I'd be very happy to. You know, I've been very fortunate in my career. I served in India for five years and have followed, you know, developments in India very closely. And I'm very, very enthusiastic about the program that the Grameen Foundation has in India, which is called the Grameen Mitra program. Grameen, of course, is a, is a Bengali uh, word for village, and Mitra is uh, the word for friend. And so the combination of the two is a village friend. And one of the things that we're able to do in India is to train and support village women who are able to go house to house, and they're able to provide access to financial services to their members and to their, to their neighbors. And one of, one of the key things in India that's happening now is that they're digitizing the economy. They're uh, basing it all on a biometric identification. And our, our women actually, are the Grameen Mitras in India are actually able to assist uh, very, very poor women to become, uh, to, to get identified through their fingerprints and to have uh, financial transactions uh, executed through a mobile phone and into, the, into a bank account of a, of a rural woman. And this is really valuable in India because India does have things like social security payments, it has child benefits, but also it, it has opportunities for the uh, very, very poor women to, to keep their savings in, in local accounts. So our Grameen Mitras you know, are essentially the walking ATMs and the walking banks that are able to go house to house and help other women uh, use uh, you know, the platform that exists in India for, you know, for digital, uh, digital financial inclusion. And there, there's a fantastic uh, story on our website about Kom, uh, Komal, who is a community agent who works in uh, Jimabad in, in, uh, in, in India, uh, which, which really does tell that story very well. Are there any questions that have come in? Uh, no, uh, oh, yes, we do. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Willine said, thank you for the presentation and for talking about comfort. Can you please provide us with a little bit more background what is the Grameen Foundation's general strategy uh, within Africa? But I think you could talk about that also more, more globally as well. Great, thank you very much. You know, our, our history at Grameen Foundation is essentially, is how expanding access to financial services, so savings and loans and information and support uh, from, you know, from organizations and support from, your, uh, from communities, essentially empowers women and empowers communities to improve their economic well-being. And you know, we're, we, we primarily historically did that through microcredit and microfinance. And uh, you know, that activity expanded tremendously over time. But what's happening now is with the, on, with the, with the, the growth of use of mobile technology, access to information, access to financial services, are really now being delivered more and more through mobile technology. So the end of what we're trying to accomplish is, is of course, poverty alleviation. But through doing that, it's uh, doing that by improving the access to financial services, improving the ways that poor, that the poor in the world can grow and become more food self-sufficient, and by also helping them afford access to health care and access to education for their families. So. That, that's really essentially the work that we do uh, globally and, uh, and, and, and primarily in, uh, you know, in the least developed countries in the world. 
Okay, thank you, Steve. Here's another one from Terry. Can you talk uh, a little bit about how the community agent doing making a profile for a, for a client like Comfort, how that helps her get access to financing and markets and the different things she needs? Right. No, great. Thank you. Um, you know, the, 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 I think the important thing to bear in mind is that through mobile phones now, much like what's happening within the U.S. with things like PayPal, or things like Venmo, it, these, are, these are payment platforms that are being developed all over the world that allow the transaction or the, or the, you know, the, the payments to happen via mobile devices. So the, the first thing that we do is we assist a trusted village uh, person, mainly women, mainly a woman who's come out of the microfinance world. We assist her on a mobile device to become an agent for mobile money platforms. So she can handle uh, the remittances that come into a village. She can cash, that, you know, cash them in and cash them out. And then over time, we help her understand what other interest there is for loans, for savings, et cetera, from the community. And we help her to get the links to those institutions that provide those services. And we train her and support her. And we train and support using technology platforms. Uh, we have a, 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 cl a client relationships management platform that we call TaraWorks, which we use to train and support the agents. We have a training platform on mobile devices, which is called GLEAP, which is, uh, is, is available to an agent at any time to refresh her memory, to learn, again, what she needs to do to manage you know, the coding, to manage the customer relations, et cetera. And we also work with the supervisors and the field staff who train the agents to continue to support them. So that, that's, uh, that, that's really what, what our role is. It's to help identify the right agent. It's to help train and equip them uh, with the right kinds of in-person support and technology support. And then it's to, uh, then it's to help them you know, uh, learn what, what, community what the community values and how through mobile phones we can continue to grow and, 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 and supply the kinds of support that the rest of the community is looking for. Okay, another question from Cornelius Tawang. He's actually joining us from Cameroon. So thank you for Cornelius coming in. I'm sure the time is not as ideal for you. Um, he asked, what does it take to become a Grameen Foundation agent? How do we find our community agents? It's a very good question. And, you know, by and large, you know, we, we're very fortunate at Grameen Foundation to have a history of relationships with many in the microfinance world, uh, with many who are working in the agricultural sector. So, you know, uh, mostly what we rely on is identifying, you know, through our staff and through partners that we work with who are trusted. And as I mentioned, you know, many, many of the trusted agents now are women who have come out of the microcredit groups, the microfinance groups, or the savings groups. And they, they have that trusting relationship with their friends and neighbors. And, you know, that, that's the key variable. That's the key kind of, uh, uh, you know, first qualification right there. And then, of course, you know, we always look for where, you know, there are, uh, there are partners that we can rely on, you know, that can, that can link in and support, uh, you know, the, the agent uh, and can, you know, can go hand in hand with us to continue, you know, to make it a self-sustaining activity. So, you know, it really, really depends on those two things at the base. And then, of course, you know, the, it, it also depends on, you know, where we're able to mobilize the resources that we need, we need to do this. You know, we, we calculate it's anywhere, you know, from about 25, depending on the country, to about $75 for agent to, to support. And, you know, to do this at scale really requires us, you know, being able to, to count on the, the resources to do it. Okay, great. Another question, um, could, if you could comment on this. It seems that one of the biggest benefits of your use of technology is that you can maintain and expand a reach in an environment where maybe global development wasn't the highest priority uh, historically. Um, so could you just comment on that? That's, that's absolutely it. You know, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of what the traditional microfinance movement has done. Uh, you know, that is, you know, the group-based microcredit that was basically done through, you know, paper money, paper recording, et cetera. You know, it's reached almost uh, 200 million poor clients, 
but you know, there's another 1.2, 1.3 billion people globally who are outside of formal financial systems. And one of the things that we find that mobile money and the Grameen Community Agents is able to do is really rapidly expand the access that the poorest among us you know, have to uh, formal financial services, in particular savings, which is really critical. And then in addition to that, I think, you know, really the thing to really, really understand and, and a key role that the agents played are that, you know, these are, they're banks without, without bricks. They're in the most remote areas, you know, of, of the countries that we're working with. You know, they're working in rural communities where, frankly, the amount of time and effort often that, was, that, would have, that it took a very poor woman to leave her home, to travel to a brick and mortar bank, to you know, transact whatever she was transacting there was really burdensome. I mean, we know, I know of examples from my travels where you know, essentially that's a very long day of bus rides and walking to make happen. So the, the Grameen community agents essentially are overcoming you know, this tremendous constraint that the poor have uh, just in terms of time and effort you know, to be a part of a, of a formal financial system that, that allows them access to savings and lending and gives them, you know, the, the visibility within that system, you know, to, 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 to know how to manage it, to know how to negotiate it, and, and also to, you know, to work within it and to their benefit. So there, there's a tyranny in remoteness for the poor, and the Grameen community agents overcome that. Great, thank you, Steve. Um, so what are you most excited about as we go, as we start 2020? Well, I, I'm, I'm very, very excited about, the, about this hallmark of our work and communicating to all of you, you know, just how significant the, commun the Grameen Community Agent concept is and has been for us. You know, it's been quite a, an amazing you know, revelation for us to really look hard at what we've done in the past and for us to say, you know, the real game changer for our work and the thing that we know is self-sustaining and incredibly scalable is, is neighbor to neighbor. It's putting mobile technology in the hands of a trusted neighbor and that being the conduit for information and financial services to the rest of her, uh, rest of her community. And we, we know we can scale this, we've done it, we're doing it now in a number of countries. We've done it in Indonesia, we're doing it in the Philippines and India. We, we really wanna continue to do what we can and expand our work in, in a number of countries in Africa. We know this is, this is possible. And this is the wave of the future. And you know, I, I also believe, you know, maybe being a little nerdy, you know, we're we're entering into this fifth industrial revolution, which is the internet of everything, right? And you know, I think the fundamental thing that really gets us up in the in the morning and motivates us here at Grameen Foundation is how does that trend benefit the poor amongst us? And I believe this last mile service provision through a Grameen community agent is really the way it happens. She, she's trusted, she reaches others, she can help explain things and help negotiate responsibly about you know, how other poor women can benefit from this. And, and this, this is a key linchpin in, in ensuring that you know, so much of the progress that we all see you know, in, in the industrialized world, in the more, the, more the developed world, you know, really does have an opportunity to be a big game, cha game changer for the poorest among us. Okay, and for this last question, I'm going to take us back to the homepage of the website too. Someone asked, what are the ways that people can get more involved with Grameen Foundation's mission? Thank you so much. Um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, there are a number of ways, and they're, they're certainly all on the website as Kate is showing us. You know, please read our stories about the changes that, that are happening, about what the role of the Grameen community agents are. You know, we want our website also to be a source, you know, where people can follow some of the progress of our community, of the Green Community Agents. You know, please donate. I, you know, I can't emphasize enough, you know, at the moment, you know, one of the things that really does keep me awake at night is I am very concerned, you know, about the extent to which, particularly from a U.S. perspective, you know, we, we're, we're not remembering, you know, and not honoring, you know, the values that we have as a nation and how they and how they really compel us to to play a positive role in the rest of the world. So I hope Grameen Foundation can be 
a way that that many of you continue to view, you know, uh, uh, as a way of contributing to making our world a, a better and and making the poorest among us less vulnerable and and more secure. So please, if you can donate, it, this is really the time uh, to continue to help us. You know, we we do have a, a lot of different ways of engagement. You know, Kate, you, if you go back to that 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 uh, you know the yeah. You know, uh, we, we have a, a very active uh, volunteer network. Uh, our program is called Bankers Without Borders. This with doing, you know, very, very specific kinds of uh, technical, uh, you know, assistance programs to our partners. That's one we have, you know, some larger corporations that really engage with us in a variety of ways, uh, not only from you know a philanthropic uh, point of view and from a, a philanthropy, a you know a bankers without borders approach, but also you know they through just staff commitment to our work, you know we have regular uh, call-ins with them to inform them of our work. They visit our programs once a year as a as a company, you know that that's definitely a possibility. You know, keep an eye on our website. Uh, you know, our team. You know, Kate and Jean Schwartz, Princia in particular. You know, we're we're going to be offering more webinars uh, as we you know as as we unfold as we roll out you know the grooming community agent concept. We're going to be having events you know in uh, in different areas, and I'll you know I'll be traveling uh, to different parts of the country over the next few months to get more uh, you know to get more outreach about this and please sign up you know to get uh you know regular updates from our work as as kate is showing right now uh you know i i can't say enough you know just how excited i am about the kinds of impacts that we're able to have now with the new tools you know that are at our disposal uh and and the results that we're seeing really are amazing self-sustaining scalable and, and replicable in so many ways and you know we're we're very very committed at Grameen Foundation to to continuing to expand and grow this work, and we just you know invite uh, all of you to continue to you know to follow us, to help us, uh, to do what you can to get get the word out about us. Uh, you know certainly if you are active on social media, you know please please uh, please push out our our website to everybody. But uh, thank you so much for joining. Kate, did you have more? I think you're muted, Kate. Sorry, I was on mute. Okay. Um, that's the last question, unless anyone has a last minute one. Um, so I think we're all set. I think we just do have the announcement about what's coming in March next. Great. Well, uh, that's, that's over to me. You know, I hope you can join our next webinar. It's going to be on March 5th. And it's actually with probably one of our most engaging employees. Her name is Bobby Gray. Uh, she's the director of research at, uh, at Grameen Foundation, and she has an amazing perspective on our work, in particular how, you know, our work really does unlock so many key issues related to empowering women, their self-esteem, their agency within the family and their community, their leadership, and, uh, and, you know, this is just such a critical aspect of all that we do, and Bobby is really uniquely positioned to talk about the impacts that we have and how we measure that impact. And that's going to be our gift to you all on International Women's Day. So, uh, you know, I think uh, if there's no more, I'd like to thank everybody for joining. And, you know, thank you for your support and enthusiasm, you know, for, for Grameen's work. Uh, you know, we're at Grameen Foundation, we're just always very, very blessed, frankly, to do the work that we do and to have the kinds of impacts that, that we're able to have. So thank you so much for being a part of our family. Thanks a lot. Great, thank you, Steve, for hosting us and thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us with any lingering questions and hopefully we'll see you all on March 5th.